So uh, last year in the spring, this guy sent an email to the Postgres hackers mailing list and said, hey, does anybody want to go to Nigeria and teach Postgres? And so I said, yes. Take me there. Uh, so <laughs> a few months later, I was on a plane, and I ended up here, Ondo State, Akura specifically. And uh, I met about 15 people, and then some actually, but about 15 people. We spent about a week uh, learning about Postgres. I, these were my students. And um, while I was there, I actually spent a lot of time talking with them about their government and an elections process that had just happened because they had just very recently come to power. So I don't know about you, but um, I actually wasn't very familiar with Nigerian politics uh, before I actually went there. So I figured I'd distill out what I learned for you into six easy steps on how to unrig an election. So uh, the first step might be kind of obvious, but uh, you actually have to run for office, right? So uh, you got Mimico right here in the black hat and Agugu here in the blue hat, and the blue hat guy is from like, the major part of the PDP, and, Mimico was from a smaller party, so anyway, so he's kind of up against, up against the big guy, but he, he went for it anyway. Um, so they ran a great campaign, and then on April 14, 2007, there was an election, and you may have heard about this well, it was a while ago now, but anyway, the, there was a lot of controversy about the elections, both international and local observers thought that it didn't go so well, and the people were pretty angry, pretty upset, so there was rioting, there was violence, and then they actually counted up the ballots, um, and uh, yeah, so over the course of the weekend, the result came back and Mimico lost. Um, there had been some polls though, and they had really been sure that uh, they were going to win, and so they had a choice at that point. Um, do you uh, let things stay as they are and wait a few years and maybe try to run again, or do you fight it? So um, anyway, about a month after that, they decided to protest it, and a, an elections tribunal uh, was created um, and the, the fight began. So the first thing that they had to do was gather up all these ballots and uh, in Nigeria when you vote you get this paper ballot and you take and you put your fingerprint next to the candidate that you vote for. So they collected all these ballots up and they scanned them in. These IT folks um, that were there scanned all these ballots and there were probably you know maybe like 150, 160,000 of them that they were able to recover. Um, and uh, these were a couple of the guys that worked on this. I spent a lot of time with them, Feng Shou and Cyril. Um, they led, led this effort, led a, a, actually a fairly large team, this other guy, Tunde, as well. But anyway, um, so they had all these ballots scanned in, and they needed to find a fingerprint expert to help them analyze everything. And they found this guy, Adrian Forty, he's in the UK, and they sent all these files to him, and they started going through, going through all of these ballots that they found. And uh, anyway, they found that there were a lot of duplicates. Um, and they found that there were 84,814 duplicates, in fact. Um, and among them, like 300 of the same fingerprint were found in one case. Yeah, so um, they had the evidence that they needed. And uh, now all they had to do was wait for about two years for the case to make it through the courts. A lot of, uh, a lot of sitting in courtrooms and testifying. Yeah, it took a while. But in the end, they won, and um, that was great. Uh, so Mimico, um, the Labor Party won, and um, their victory uh, was fantastic and wonderful, but immediately the other uh, outgoing government, they pretty much just left, there was no transition, so they had a lot of work cut out for them. Um, and this is a Yoruba saying that means uh, left like thieves. This is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site where the railings were cut by the outgoing government. So lots of cleanup work that had to be done afterward, and it's ongoing. Um, but uh, they, they came in with a lot of hope to change the way that the government had been run. They set up this thing called Seat Deck, a bunch of IT folks uh, trying to implement cool stuff. They're trying to say, for example, like put up microwave links between cities um, to improve the internet access. They're, they're trying to hook citizens up to their government through their phones by letting them text message questions and get answers to things they want to know. And uh, they're not confining their efforts just to their state, Ondo State. Um, this is a picture of uh, Tonde, one of the other guys that I spent a fair amount of time talking with. And he um, has gone and testified in another state that had a similar uh, you know, voter fraud issue and is you know, spreading the love here on the technology that they use. So it's, uh, 
It's a really great thing. So anyway, um, if you're interested at all in ever going to Nigeria, um, they actually, uh, this government is looking for people, open source hackers, like whoever, they want to come and work on stuff. So if you're interested in that, I had one taker the last time I gave this talk. So yeah, come talk to me afterward.